Well, today our vlog's about the man who invented cosmic American music, Graham Parsons. Next stop, the Joshua Tree Inn. And this is where our story starts today. One of Graham Parsons' favorite hangouts and a place that he used to bring Keith Richards to come watch for UFOs, Joshua Tree National Park. Well, today our story takes place here. Well, at least it starts here. Now, originally the vlog was meant to have a little bit of a twist to it, and I'll tell you as we go along what that twist was. Now in 1973, September, Graham Parsons, one of his buddies and two girlfriends came out here, much like he always did. He loved to get on his motorcycle and come up here and spend the night, go up to Joshua Tree and uh, explore the park, but he always loved to stay here at the Joshua Tree Inn. Now September 19th, he was here in 1973, him and his friends decided to go out and get something to drink, tie one on, and they went with the husband of the innkeeper here at the time. They came back later that night, and not too long after their return, the woman in Graham's room started shouting that Graham was not responding. Graham Parsons died here at the Joshua Tree Inn, in room eight, a room that he stayed in many, many times in his life. So the Joshua Tree Inn now has turned itself into a memorial place for Graham's spirit. Inside this building, there's a beautiful tribute to Graham that we'll see here very shortly. Now, it would have been great to stay in that room, room number eight, because Graham died there. I've stayed there before. And I thought it was such a great idea, I figured, why not do it today? So tonight, we spend the night in Graham's room, room number eight. Now, if you're not familiar with who Graham Parsons was, Graham Parsons was this amazing country rock artist in the late 60s and 70s. A lot of people credit him as being the person that helped bridge country into rock and roll. A lot of people say that when the Rolling Stones and Graham Parsons started hanging out, their music dovetailed into a more country sound than it ever had been before. In fact, the Rolling Stones, when they wrote Wild Horses, they gave that song to Graham and Graham recorded it first. It wasn't until, for whatever reason, the radio decided not to play it in heavy rotation that the Rolling Stones decided to redo the song and re-release it. Now, Graham was best friends with Keith Richards. He had made music his entire life from the time that Graham was young. His parents um, were very wealthy. His father died in prison, a drunk, and unfortunately, um, but Graham's mother's side was extremely wealthy, and they basically pampered Graham's every wish throughout the rest of his life. They bought him a music venue that he could perform at when he was in high school after he saw Elvis Presley. He started performing, loved it so much that he as soon as he graduated, he took off to New York, formed a band. He actually went to Harvard and studied, studied theology at one point before moving out to Hollywood and trying his hand at making music. Now Graham became fast friends with the Rolling Stones and it wasn't too long before he would meet Chris Hillman of the Birds and the Birds would invite Graham to join the band. As soon as Graham joined the band, the sound, as you guessed, took a definitively country sound to it. You can hear some great country influences in that record. And Graham met a band member named Clarence White. Now when Clarence White died, just about six, seven months before Graham did, Graham went to his funeral with his best friend Phil Kaufman, who was also Graham Parsons' solo and the Bird's their tour director. So. Basically, Phil's job was always to make sure that anything Graham was a part of, that he always made it there on time, if it was a performance that he was able to perform. And while they were at this funeral, Graham and Phil looked at each other, looking at this lavish funeral that they knew Clarence would not have wanted, and Graham said to Phil, 
If I ever die, I don't want a funeral like this. I just want you to take my body and take me out to Joshua Tree and burn me up. And Phil said, you know what, the same goes for me. If you die before me, take my body out to Joshua Tree and set it on fire and let my soul free. So when Graham Parsons died, Phil wasn't here. And immediately regret set in that Phil somehow felt that he should have been here, that he was partially responsible for a 26 year old rock star death. And so Phil and his girlfriend were sitting around the house talking and he said, you know, I promised him I would take him out to Joshua Tree and set his soul free. And she said, well, what are you doing? What are you sitting around for? Go do it. They've kept his room very similar to the way it was before. And even before Graham was ever staying here, this had been a hot spot for celebrities even before Graham's era. John Barrymore used to stay here. John Wayne used to stay here. And then when the rock and roll era came, Graham Parsons, Keith Richards, Emmy Lou Harris, Donovan, they all stayed here. In fact, one of the times that I stayed here, as I was checking in, I used to know the innkeeper here pretty well and she was telling me that I had just missed Robert Plant and that he had been here. So that night, I went up to uh, Pappy and Harriet's where we were at yesterday and they weren't open, was eating dinner, and Robert Plant went up on stage and started performing a couple of songs with the band. Now we're gonna go inside and see the room and then I'm gonna tell you how this story continues on. Now, today I'm wearing a special pair of my sunglasses and these are for Steve Wilson. Steve Wilson contacted me a while ago and it's actually thanks to him that we're doing this vlog. He contacted me and said, did you know that Graham Parsons manager, his road manager, Phil Kaufman is still alive and every once in a while does a tour out in Joshua Tree telling his story? I had heard this years before but I didn't know he was still doing it so we contacted Phil and we had scheduled to meet up out here and we were gonna do this vlog now unfortunately Phil is having some health difficulties and was advised by his doctor not to fly from Nashville so he ended up having to cancel but since I had already booked this room I still wanted to do this vlog today I'm gonna explain to you and show you just the room and then I'm gonna tell you Phil's story and continue it on into the park all right, well I got the keys to my room. Are you guys ready to go in and see where Graham used to spend a lot of his time in Joshua Tree? Let's go. You can see all those lights going along the top. Check this out. Very rustic here, but that's, you know, that's this whole area, and that's what I come here for. Now this is the same pool that was here when he was here. And if you stay here, they even have a barbecue you can use. And I did bring my swim trunk, so I might go swimming tonight. What a beautiful view, huh? All right, let me show you around a little bit more. Now, as soon as you enter here, you probably notice this, the two-headed snakes. There's one right there, and then there's one right down in here. Now they wholeheartedly embrace Graham's passing here. They memorialize it, and the entire place is decorated in Graham. Inside this room is where we're gonna have breakfast tomorrow. I'll walk us in there. The entire check-in room and the breakfast room and everything is all Grammed out. So, I'm gonna walk us through here and just show you the, uh, show you some of the grounds, show you the flowers and stuff. And then I'll walk you over to, uh, to my room. No fishing. Now every time I come out here, they have always had a memorial to Graham. Always. They've never not had one. However, every single time I come here, it changes. And it's changed this time from the last time I was here for the better. Check this out. An old bicycle spoke. 
All right, I'm gonna take us through here. And then we're going to head into Graham's room, which is my room. This is the room where Graham died. And this is what they have sitting right outside the door. First off, you have this almost royal-like chair that's been out here for years. And then they always had this, this little safe at home. That's, that was one of Graham's songs. And they've always had all these little memorial things here. People can leave pretty much anything that they want compelled to celebrate Graham's life but the new addition that I had never seen look at all the you can see right here on the shoes people have put GP and put the cross the grievous angel so here you see all these little things that people have left for Graham the key and the boots and all that stuff but this is what's new they now put this gigantic, and I mean gigantic, guitar here. Taller than me, so it's, I would say this has to be seven foot tall. And it says his name in it. I don't know why they had to paint it black, but it says Graham Parsons on it. And then all the way around it, it has the kind of things that were on his nudie suits. You can see the uh, the cactus and the Joshua tree right there and the birth and death date at the bottom. Kind of like the ultimate honor for him. And then right at the very top it has the the cross that he would always have on his stuff. And then it says, you can probably see here it says safe at home going down the headstock and then they always have a bench out here where you can sit and reflect and pay your respects all right you guys ready to look at the back even all right are you guys ready to go see Graham's death room let's go And there he is. Hard to believe he died at the age of 26. Almost seemed like he lived a million lifetimes with the life he lived. Now, like I said, it was September 19th. Graham was officially pronounced dead from this room. And Phil, like I told you, had made a pact. He said that if he outlived Graham, he agreed to take Graham's body, set his soul free by burning it in the desert. So Phil, being back in Los Angeles, decided to do just that. Phil went and borrowed a hearse that a hippie friend of his had. He said she was pretty wealthy and got a good deal on it, loaned it to him. So he and a friend went to LAX with that hearse. They posed as undertakers 
and where Graham's body was supposed to fly to New Orleans for burial, they signed it out under the name Jeremy Nobody. They were given Graham's body, they put it in the hearse, and they started driving out here to Joshua Tree. Now one of the great things that this room does is it not only pays honor to Graham's life and the Flying Burrito Brothers did play Altamont. They were supposedly the kind of the one moment in the day where it kind of calmed everybody down. But what they do here is they have a whole collection of Graham's music that you can play while you're in the room. They have articles from Graham's death. And Steve, Steve Wilson had contacted me telling me that Phil was doing this. And he also told me that he takes care of his wife and that he wasn't able to come on this tour himself. So he paid for me to come on the tour. And then when the tour got canceled, I told him I will continue to do this vlog in Graham's room. And so Steve, I'm going to give you the sunglasses that we do this vlog in. And we're going to look at a few more things outside and then we're gonna take this on the road into Joshua Tree National Park where Phil took Graham's body. Now if you wanted to uh, if you wanted to see the inside of the bathroom, not much has changed here. There's the shower. And then you also get a little outdoor area. So you can imagine as many times as Graham must have stayed here, how many times he must have hung out right here, or even right in front where we were, swam in that pool. And it's been said that this was his favorite, most preferred room. So to know that Graham Parsons' life ended here, he passed away in here, hits me pretty hard. He's one of my favorite musicians of all time. If you'd like to hear some of his, what I consider to be his best music, listen to Return of the Grievous Angel, Thousand Dollar Wedding, um, Love Hurts, Dark End of the Street, Flying Burrito, or Hot Burrito Number 1 and Hot Burrito Number 2. I think you'd enjoy all of them. And here on all the uh, tribute items inside the room, you can see many musicians have come and paid their respects by leaving guitar picks or even little notes written into the artwork or photos of themselves in cap rock or in this room writing songs, which I myself have written a song in here. Maybe I'll include that at the end. I love that they put this in here. That just seemed so appropriate man who spent more money on his nudie suits than he did practicing. Seems only fitting he have a gold cowboy hat in here. Now that photo right there is actually on the cover of his GP album and that was taken inside the Chateau Marmont and when I looked up here I noticed something that I loved immediately. Jobless Graham Parsons. And I didn't put that there. Now many people believe that this room is haunted with Graham's spirit and I generally don't ever believe in that kind of stuff and I've spent the night in this room numerous times. I will tell you from personal experience I believe that story. For years I stayed here and there was a white cat named Skye, S-K-Y-E, that lived on the premises and Skye had one yellow eye and one light blue, almost Marilyn Manson looking eye. And a lot of people believe that Sky had Graham's spirit. I saw it firsthand myself. If you played Graham's music on a boombox or on a guitar, Sky would come and start walking around your feet. If you played anyone else's music, Sky would walk away. 
One of the times I spent the night here was on my birthday, and I decided to play Graham's music all night on that boombox. Sky pushed the door open in this room four times that night. If I didn't have the deadbolt locked, Sky would come in this room. Now I cannot explain how it happened, but if you did not have this door locked, you could be laying on that bed and all of a sudden, this door would just push itself open. Now you can tell here, as I push, it's not opening. And yet, for some reason, I would come here, I would close, I would hear the door latch, I would lay on the bed and start playing the music, and next thing I know, I would hear the crack of this door go like that, and Sky would push the door the rest of the way open and come walking in this room. It was unbelievable. For all the time that I've been coming here, I used to always complain that they never had good merchandise for sale. So I ended up having to just go out and buy my own Graham Parsons shirt outside of this place. Then when I showed up today, they actually had a new manager that got some really great merchandise. I've been wanting a hoodie recently. I've literally just been thinking about it the last couple of days, so I bought a hoodie here. Look at what their merchandise is now for the Joshua Tree Inn. Graham in his nudie suit. So they gave me one of their new business cards, and you can see right there in the dead center they have the Sacred Burning Heart with the GP in it. That was one of Graham Parsons' main imagery logos. That was something he had on all of his suits, something he used a lot of. So if you're wondering why I had that same exact heart on our new sunglasses, that's why. That's why I used that heart for our lion heart right there. All right, we're gonna head to the park now. All right, I think I want to get something to eat before we head up into the park. Looks like Santana's is gone. That's the place I usually eat, but I'm going to eat what's at what's there now called Castaneda's. All right, here's our place. Well, okay, it looks like it's still Santana's. They just, I don't know, looks like it's the same business, just different names. Castaneda's and Santana's, I don't know. It's great, though. Oh yeah, that is a monster steak quesadilla, but it's probably the best one you can find. I know it sounds strange to say that, but even out of any restaurant I've ever went to, I still prefer them here than anywhere else. Killed it. Alright, we're heading about 30 minutes out into the middle of the desert. Headed to a place called Cap Rock. Wow, check out that place. Alright, we're in. $25 park entrance fee. Well, this is Cap Rock. This is where Phil and a friend brought the casket out. They found that special spot. I'm gonna go show you where that was. Now they call it Cap Rock because that rock up there on top looks like a cap. <laughs> now right over here, fill in their friend, and as I understand it, I could be wrong about this, but I believe the friend that came out here with him was the same friend who was out there with him the night he died. They brought Graham's casket out here, opened the lid up. Phil said we used to have this game where I would point at his shirt on his chest and say, you got something on your shirt, buddy, and pop him in the nose. He said I did gave him one of those and sent him along. Poured gasoline over him and lit a match and said, see you around, pal. He said the oxygen inside Graham's body exploded into a big gas ball into the sky and he could see Graham's ashes billowing up into the sky the way he wished, setting the soul free. Now they've documented this spot. All the fans have come out here and 
for a long, long time, this was black. This was from the burning, the smoke and everything. You can see where somebody's put hot burrito, number one and number two. GP, we miss you. 20,000 roads, I go down, down, down. Some of you may not know that my favorite song is a Graham Parsons song called Return of the Grievous Angel. And that's the chorus to the song. Just an absolutely tearful song. And every time you come out here, this will have changed because different times I've come out here, they've had paintings of the red cross that Graham always had on his nudie suit and various things out here, but the park department discourages that, so they keep coming out here and sandblasting that off. But you can see where people have stacked rocks. Take me down to your dance floor, but I can dance. Oh, man. R.I.P. Graham. So, Steve, I wanted you to feel like you were also here. So, your sunglasses will be right here where Graham had his last moments. And got his wish, thanks to Phil. Now, Phil Kaufman was actually arrested a couple of days later at his home in Los Angeles. Because of being with Graham and them always getting in trouble, he had a lawyer and a bail bondsman on retainer, had them meet him at the jail, they bailed him out before he was ever in, and when he went to trial, they said that Graham's body had no monetary value, and that Phil was ordered to pay the cost of the casket. The girl who loaned him the hearse paid for the cost of the casket, so he said, I got off scot-free, granting my buddy's wish and getting a cool story out of it. And I'm going to go ahead and leave my own little note to Graham. 26 years old. If you're looking for a place to start, you can't go wrong with that Rhino reissue. The Graham Parsons Anthology. The reason that Phil brought Graham out here in this specific spot at Cap Rock to set his soul free was because this was Graham's favorite spot in all of Joshua Tree. He would ride his motorcycle out here all the time with Keith Richards and stare up at the sky looking for UFOs. So he knew this is where he would want to call it an end. God rest your soul, Graham Parsons. The grievous angel. Now right over there is where they took Graham's body to burn. And over here is the street where they would have parked. Wow, look what I just found. Corps Engineers, US Army. Surveyor control marker. Now I wanna take this street till it ends. And I wanna go up to this, uh, this overlook area. Well, we're back here at the inn, and you might be wondering, what was it that finally killed Graham? Graham had abused drugs and alcohol his entire adult life, and what finally did him in at the age of 26 here was he went out drinking with his friends one night, September 18th, had six double tequilas, and then came back to the inn here ran into a random woman staying in room two. Kind of crazy that the fountain in here looks like the mouth of truth. But the story was that he came in here, ran into the woman who was staying in room two. She injected him with some sort of liquid, nobody really seems to know what it was, and Graham started to overdose. And what they did, this is room three, so room two is where the, uh, where the innkeeper stays, would have been back in here. He started to overdose and so the people that were with him, 
instead of walking him around, they tried to give him an ice cube enema to resuscitate him when that didn't work. They tried to give him a cold shower when that didn't work. One of the people put him to bed, had somebody watch him, and then went out to buy coffee. His breathing became more and more erratic here in his room, room eight. And they finally had to call a ambulance and he was pronounced dead at 12.15 a.m. September 19th. Oh, what a sad story, huh? What a sad, sad story. Well, this is pretty crazy. I just got a knock at my door. Do you want to introduce yourself? Tell everybody on my channel who you are because we're in Graham's room. We are. I am Cece Parsons, uh, the sister of Polly Parsons and the daughter of Nancy Parsons. Um, I'm here with my friend Carly, who's an amazing photographer. We came out to shoot some sites and thought we'd come to uh, Joshua Tree Inn for the first time and visit some ancestors. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So Graham would basically be your stepdad. Yeah, yeah, and the okay. love of my mom's life. I mean, to this day. Yeah, that's. Yeah. I mean, that's how great. I mean, what does that feel like to be in here? Have you ever been in here before? I haven't. I haven't. Um, I, you know, I grew up around his legend my whole life. You know, we'd go to Nashville for music tributes, and um, he was just always a constant part of our life. But I respected the fact that you know it was my sister's dad, and I. It was very uh, respectful of, of that, but it was ever present in my life. I feel like I, I know him and his life and his impact that he's had on so many people through so many generations, and of course my mom and sister, um, and just to learn more about him as time goes on and his enduring legacy with all of his fans that travel out here and uh, still have such a, a warm affection for him is just... It's pretty rare that this room is is not booked. I mean, every time I check, it's pretty much always booked, so... Yeah. I was actually out here because I was supposed to meet Phil. You were? Phil Coffin was doing... Yeah, yeah. yeah I was supposed to meet Phil, and he was um, too ill to fly from Nashville. Oh, what a bummer. Yeah, so it's going to happen in the fall, but yeah, that's crazy that you came and people got to see you and meet you, so. It's actually, it's actually because of Carl. I was like, it's too late, we shouldn't, I was like, we should knock on the door. I was like, what if he's with my girl? No, I'm just editing <laughs> vlogs, so this was perfect timing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I didn't know what to expect, and I had, I called my sister, and I was like, so, can you put, I know it's last minute, but can you put, a, like, I'd love to take some photos for you or leave something, you know, because she, she misses her father all the time, and she's constantly, um, you know, adding memories of him to... Was she able to get any of his guitars or any of his clothes or any yeah, items like that? Yeah, I okay, mean, she, good. she was able to... Uh, it's It's been kind of um, a tenuous relationship with, with Gretchen a little bit. Right, she, right. She kind of... It was like the whole Elvis one, kind right. of situation, you know? Yeah, I mean, no offense, he... Gretchen. Um, but... Um, it's it's been good. She's she's had a lot of warm reception from people who were you know lovers of Graham. He touched everybody in such a unique way to yeah. really live to twenty six and have Nudie's daughter. You know, for example, um, part of my sister's life and Nora Jones and all the people who played the tribute concert, mm -hmm. who, just out of love for Graham, um, came together and did that for her, and she still enjoys that kind of. We'll take as much time in here as you'd like. I'll turn the camera off now. Thanks. Thanks for being on the vlog. Of course. So now the story gets a little bit weirder, guys, because they just invited me down to their room, and they're staying in room two. The innkeeper's room. The room that they say that Graham had done the injection in. His overdose shot, so they're going to let me show the room. So this is room two. This was this was the room that they said that he came in here with a lady and done the shot in, or did the shot in. How crazy is that? Well, have a great night everyone. Thank you for watching. And good bye. Like a statue
you for a chief The ones who fought the accolades And ended up the thief As long as I keep reading All these books of other men I'll be half a man But none of them I'm the ghost that